Welcome dear listeners of Kanguka. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of this broadcast. Today is Wednesday and I would like to talk once again about prayer. You know that I often tell you that you can pray anytime and anywhere. God can hear your prayers at any time. You don't have to pray at a specific hour of the day. But I strongly urge the listeners of Kanguka to pray especially in the morning. You can pray at noon or at night and God will hear you. But it's even better to pray when you start your day which means in the morning for most people. Some people heard me urging people to start their day in prayer in the morning and they wrote to me saying that they work at night and they get home in the morning. They didn't understand why they would need to pray in the morning at the end of their day. But let me tell you that it's not the morning itself that's important. What's important is to start your day in prayer. If the morning is the end of your day because you work at night, then whenever you wake up during the day is the actual start of your day. And that's when you should pray. I hope you understand this. Whenever you wake up, that's the start of your day. Your day can start in the evening or at noon or in the morning. It's whenever you wake up to start your day after you've rested. So it's important to set aside time for prayer when you start your day. Never leave your home without praying. Many listeners of Kangoka are now spiritually awakened and they've made it a habit to start their day in prayer. If you've been listening to the broadcast every day and you're still not starting your day in prayer, then there must be something wrong because these are words of life that I keep sharing with you. Many people testify that there is life in these messages. You can't listen to these words regularly and still leave your home without praying. If you leave your home without praying, it means that you still don't understand very well what happens in the spiritual world and you still don't understand what kind of world we live in. In Luke chapter 10 verse 18, Jesus said to his disciples, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Even today, there are things that happen in the spiritual realm that you don't see. You may not see those spiritual lightnings, but they exist. I love what Jesus said in verse 19. He said, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Jesus wasn't talking about physical snakes or scorpions, but he was referring to spiritual forces, demons that are in the spiritual realm. He goes on to say, I give you the authority to trample over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. In other words, Jesus is telling them that he has given power to them. Let me tell you that Jesus didn't empower only those 70 disciples, but he has given the same power to all the people who believed in him. If you believe in Jesus, you've accepted him as Lord and Savior and you have faith, then I want you to know that you have the same power. But this power can only be at work if you start your day in prayer. I want you to understand that whenever you start your day in prayer, you're receiving the same power to trample over all the power of the enemy. I hope that you understand this. When you're praying in the morning, you're crushing the power of Satan. You know that Satan's power is at work against you and is trying to trap you. Satan always has many plans against you. He wants to attack your physical health and your spiritual health. He comes against any ministry work that you're doing. He attacks your family. There are many families that are under attack. That's why you need to pray every morning and you need to lift up your family in prayer. You need to destroy the enemy's plans through prayer and you need to declare words of life. I want you to understand that when you pray in the morning, you need to pray in the name of Jesus. Don't just pray any way you want. You have to pray in the name of Jesus. Whenever you pray in the morning, in the name of Jesus without complaining and without hypocrisy, there is something supernatural that occurs in your life and in that day. There are serpents and scorpions that are going to flee in the spiritual realm because you prepared your day through prayer. God can still allow some issues in your life. But let me tell you that when you pray before you start your day and you don't complain and you give thanks to God, you receive victory even before you leave your home.
It's now time to continue our study of the book of Romans. Yesterday, we were looking at chapter 4 and I would like to continue the topic I was discussing. I was showing you that Abraham believes God for the impossible and it was credited to him as righteousness. This must be new to some of you who didn't know that your faith can save you. You can be called righteous because of your faith in God. Faith is very important. We're not saved by the law, but we saved through faith. You need to believe in what Jesus has done. You need to believe that God is able and you have to stop doubting whenever you face some problem. Let me tell you that God hates unbelief. That's why the third guiding principle of Kanguka says that it's forbidden to complain. When you complain, it means that you're filled with doubt. Complaining and unbelief go hand in hand. You can't complain unless you already have unbelief. When you have faith, you don't complain. I hope you're catching this. Let me say it again. When you complain, it means that you already have unbelief in your heart. You're asking questions like, why did this happen? Why God? Where were you when this happened? These are words of a person who's already filled with doubt. But when you have faith in God, it doesn't matter how bad things look. It doesn't matter that your situation doesn't make sense. You continue to stand on God's promise. You just know what the God of heaven has said. And even though you don't understand your current situation, you believe that God will handle it. That's the kind of attitude that touches God's heart and he will be credited to you as righteousness because you believe for unseen things in in the name of Jesus. God loves the people who believe for things they don't see. That's why the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 that we walk by faith and not by sight. If you're not already familiar with the story of Abraham, I urge you to read about it in Genesis chapter 18 verse 10 to 14. This passage clearly shows the faith of Abraham that allowed him to be called the father of faith. He touched God's heart and in a very special way because he believed the impossible. For those who aren't familiar with that passage, Abraham and Sarah welcomed three visitors and it turned out that they were angels sent by God. That's why the word of God says that some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. It's a reference to this story when Abraham and Sarah welcomed visitors who happened to be angels sent by God. There is blessing in doing good. Being hospitable or helping people is always a source of blessing. God blesses a lot the people who are hospitable. So Abraham and Sarah welcomed three visitors and it turned out that they were angels. One of them told Abraham that he will come back the following year around the same time and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Verse 11 clearly explained that Abraham and Sarah were very old. Sarah was many years into her menopause and it was impossible for her to conceive a child. Verse 12 says that when Sarah heard the angel, she laughed because she thought it was impossible. She said to herself that she was too old and couldn't even desire her husband and her husband was also too old. But in verse 13, the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? You can see that God wasn't angry at Abraham, but he was angry at Sarah. God had no issue with Abraham because he believed. But he had an issue with Sarah because she didn't believe and she laughed. That's why he asked Abraham why Sarah laughed, saying that she can't have a child because she's too old. In verse 14, God said, Is anything too hard for the Lord? I really love this part. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. He went on to say that at the appointed time, he will come back the next year and Sarah will have a son. I hope you're getting this because it's a very important lesson. Abraham believed God, but Sarah thought it was impossible. I want you to understand that nothing is impossible to God. What's impossible to man is possible to God. Please read chapter 5 in preparation for tomorrow. May I am bless you. Have a great day. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.